didn't see you guys there. Every week I fall for that. How you guys doing? Welcome to 212 Kid this week, and I'm so glad that you continue to be with us as we focus on our faith. And here's what faith is, right? Remember, faith is this, trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. Now, maybe it seems strange to trust in something and put your faith in something that you can't see, but let me tell you something. We actually do that all the time. And let me tell you what I mean. I want everybody, no matter where you are, to stand up. And when I count to three, I want you to jump as high as you can. Are you ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Oh, awesome. Now, let me ask you something. When you jumped, were you worried that once you jumped in the air that you were just going to keep floating and floating all the way up into space? Of course not. You know why? Because we have gravity. Now, I have never seen gravity with my own eyes, but I know that it keeps me on the ground. Otherwise, people would just randomly start floating up in the sky. Now, that would be kind of cool, but thank goodness it doesn't happen because gravity keeps us on the ground. Well, let me tell you something, guys. Having faith in God is just like that. Maybe we can't see God with our own eyes, but when we focus on the things that he's done in our lives and the things that he's done in the lives of those around us, you know what it does? It helps us to put our trust in him. And speaking of focusing on things, I have a great game that I want to play with you guys right now, and it's called Lost in the Details. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to put a picture up here and it's going to stay there for about 10 or 15 seconds. I want you to study that picture and then we're going to take it away and put up another picture. But this one's going to be slightly different and you have to figure out what is different between the second picture and the first picture. Are you ready? Here we go. Here's our first picture. So look at it, study it, figure it out, get it all in your memory, focus on it. Okay. Now we're going to put up the second picture. Now it looks similar, but there's something different. Can you figure out what it is? Okay, you think you got it? All right, now we're going to put up the first picture again. Here's the first picture. Now, what was different between the second picture and this one? Well, you might have seen it. That's that his tail is pointing down. And if you saw that, then you are correct. All right? Good job. Now, let's move on to our second picture. All right? Here we go. Here's our second picture. Look at this one. All right? Study it. Commit it to your memory. Focus all on the picture. Okay. Now, here's our second picture. Now, look at it. Figure it out. Get it in your mind. What is different about this one? You think you got it? All right, here we go. Here's the first one again. Look at it. What do you see? What was different in the second picture as opposed to this one? If you said more scales, you are correct. Good job. You guys are really focusing. That is awesome. Here's our last picture. You guys ready? Here we go. Here it is. Look at it. Focus on it. Take it all in. You got it? Okay. Now, here's the same picture, but with something slightly different. What is the detail that's different? Got to focus. Got to concentrate. Got to look at it good. All right? Okay, you got it? All right, back to the first picture. Now, what is different? Someone tell me, you got it? If you said less stripes on the second picture than on the first picture, hey, you focused correctly. Good job, everyone. That was awesome. You guys are really focusing on the details. Well, here's what we're going to do now before we get into our Bible story. I want everyone to stand up and let's get ready to worship God and to sing and love on him. You ready? Here we go.
Welcome back, guys. I'm so glad that you chose to join us today. And as we start with our Bible story, I have a question for you. Have you ever met someone and you thought you knew what they were like, but then you discovered there was so much more to them than you thought? I know I have. People are always surprising me. And it can be easy for us to think that we know people without really getting to know them. Well, our story today talks about one of Jesus' disciples, a guy that we've talked about before. His name was Peter. And Peter discovered that in a big, big way. Well, I want to set the scene for you as we get started. Now, we've talked about this before. The early church, Jesus had died, had come back to life, risen again, and gone back into heaven. And now, the group of followers that loved Jesus were called the early church. And they were growing quickly. And Peter, who was one of the leaders of the early church, used to travel from town to town sharing the good news about Jesus and actually healing the sick. It was in a town called Joppa that Peter even raised a woman that had died from the dead with the power of God's spirit. It was amazing. Well, many people in Joppa became followers of Jesus. So Peter decided he would stay there for a while and he lived with a man named Simon who worked with leather and lived right by the sea. Well, meanwhile, 
in another town, there was a Roman army commander named Cornelius, and he lived in a town called Caesarea. Now, Cornelius was not Jewish like Peter or like Jesus, but he and his family loved God, and they worshiped God, and they were very generous to anyone around them that was in need. Cornelius often prayed to God, and one day while he was praying, God sent an angel to him in a vision. And the angel told him, Cornelius, send men to Joppa and bring back a man who is named Peter. I want to read it to you out of the book of Acts, chapter 10, verses 5 and 6. Here's what it says. The angel said, now send men to Joppa, have them bring back a man named Simon, who was also called Peter. He is staying with another man named Simon, who works with leather, and his house is by the sea. Well, Cornelius did exactly what the angel told him to do. He called two of his servants and he said, hey, I want you guys to go to Joppa and find Peter. Well, about noon the next day, Peter went up on the roof of the house where he was staying and he was praying. And while he was up there, he got hungry. You guys ever get hungry in the middle of praying? I know I do. Well, he was praying and he got hungry and he wanted something to eat. And while someone was preparing a meal for him, Peter had this wild, amazing vision. Check it out. I want to read it to you. Acts chapter 10, verses 11 and 12. Here's what it says. It says, he saw heaven open up. There was something like a large sheet, and it was being let down to the earth by its four corners. It had all kinds of four-footed animals. It had reptiles, and it had birds in it. Then a voice told him, get up, Peter, kill and eat. No, Lord, I will not, Peter replied. I have never eaten anything that is not pure and clean. Well, the voice spoke to him a second time and said, Do not say that anything is not pure that God has made clean. Well, this happened three times, and right away the sheet was taken back to heaven. Well, you see, Jewish people were actually forbidden to eat meat of these kinds of animals which were called unclean according to God in the Old Testament. Well, as you might imagine, Peter was a bit confused by all of this and he wondered, what did this vision mean? Well, just then, the men that were sent by Cornelius, they arrived at the house that he was at and, and, and they asked Peter, are you staying here? Well, God's spirit immediately spoke to Peter and told him to go with them. Well, the men told Peter that Cornelius had sent them, and Peter then invited them to be his guests. Well, let me tell you something. Here's a little more information that you need to know. Just like it was for, forbidden for Jewish people to eat certain foods, there were, it was also against their rules for Jewish people to enter the homes of anyone that was not Jewish. At some point, Peter realized that God was actually telling him to do just that, because remember, Cornelius is not Jewish. He's Roman. Well, Peter understood that God was making new rules about what was clean. The story of Jesus was not just for the Jews, but it was for every single person everywhere in the entire world. Well, the next day, Peter and Cornelius, the men that he'd sent, set out on a journey to go to Cornelius' house. And some of the other believers that were in Joppa, they decided, hey, we want to go along and see what's going on too. Well, they arrived in Caesarea and they went to Cornelius' house. And, and, and this was a big deal for Peter because remember, he had never once stepped foot inside the house of somebody that wasn't Jewish. Well, Cornelius was so happy that Peter had come that he called all of his friends and all of his relatives to come to his house to hear Peter talk about Jesus. Now, Cornelius was a very important man in the Roman Empire. But Cornelius was so moved and so excited that Peter had come to his house that he actually bowed down and, and, and worshiped Peter in a sign of respect. Well, I'm sure that Peter actually appreciated this respect that was being shown by him to Cornelius. But he said to this, he said, Cornelius, no, 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 stand up. I am only a man. Or Cornelius went on to explain everything that the angel had told him, how he was supposed to send men to find Peter and then come back and, and, and bring him to him. Well, then it was Peter's turn. And Peter did this. He shared 
with everyone how God had sent Jesus to share his love with them. He talked about how Jesus had taught and healed many people throughout his life. Then he talked about how Jesus was killed on the cross and how God raised him back to life again. He even told them that, that he had actually seen Jesus when he had come back to life. And not only had he seen him with his own eyes, but he actually ate a meal with him. And finally, he shared with them how everyone who believes in the name of Jesus can have their sins forgiven and they can go to heaven to be with God someday forever. Well, while Peter spoke, God sent his Holy Spirit to Cornelius and all of his family and all of his friends that were there listening to Peter. And the Jewish believers that had come with Peter from Joppa, they were amazed because God had given the gift of the Holy Spirit that we talked about before. God had given it to people who were not Jewish. They received that amazing gift. Well, Peter then took Cornelius and baptized him in water and all of his family and all of his friends in the name of Jesus. Well, Peter ended up staying with Cornelius for a few more days because his view of people that weren't Jewish had totally changed. And that's our bottom line today, guys, for this week is this, is that knowing Jesus changes the way you see others. Because of Peter's faith in Jesus, he was able to see God's whole story. He was able to see that what Jesus had done in the cross was not just for the Jewish people, but was for everybody, including you and me. And many people's lives were changed forever. You know what? Let's pray right now and let's ask God to help us change the way that we see others around us. All right, let's do that. God, we thank you again for who you are. We thank you for the truth of your word. We thank you that you sent Jesus to show your love for everyone. And God, I pray that as we have accepted you as our Lord and Savior, as we love you, Jesus, I pray that you'll change the way that we see people around us, that we'll begin to see people like you see them, that they're special, that they're wonderfully made, that you love them, God. Father, we thank you for this, Lord. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello, I'm Lawson, and today's regularly scheduled awesomeness has been canceled. Goodbye. Oh, come on! Have a little faith! I'm not gonna leave you hanging without some serious entertainment and a very cool story. And speaking of faith, well, let me introduce to you this kid named Seth, who goes to the Y camp with my cousin. Seth is super excited for the first day of outdoor adventure camp at the Y. He's even got one of his mom's delicious, ultra, ooey gooey cinnamon rolls to eat on the way. But before he can get in the car, some guy on the street drives by way too fast. The car splashes muddy water all over Seth's new hiking shoes, causing him to drop his delicious, ultra, ooey gooey cinnamon roll in the mud. Seth shouts, No! Now Seth's gonna show up at camp muddy, late, and hungry. Seth declares, That guy was awful! People are awful! <laughs> but Dad points out that Seth's only seen one bad moment. He says for the rest of the day, Seth should focus on the good things you see. And Seth is like, huh, you're kidding me, right? Especially since it starts to rain again and turns into an epic thunder cane. And it's so wet outside that the campers have to start inside. And Seth's already missed learning how to tie different knots. But then this kid Aaron is like, I got you covered, man. And Aaron shows him how to tie a square knot, 
a sheet bed, and the ultimate campers tie up a crazy bear chasing me hitch. Then, at lunchtime, this girl named Liza invites Seth to sit with her. And she even shares her trail mix, her amazing, ultra crispy, crunchy, extreme trail mix. Then, at the very end of the day, Seth's dad texts that he's running late. Cause he's secretly a superhero! Ba -ba -da -da. But the camp director, Miss Abby, hangs out with Seth for a whole half hour. Miss Abby tells these amazing stories about some of the mountains she's climbed, like Mount Everest. And then when Seth's dad shows up, Seth can't wait to tell dad about his day. And dad's like, what did you see? Seth admits he saw some great things and adds, okay, so people aren't awful. And dad reminds Seth that God made everyone to reflect who he is. And then Seth and dad race off to save the world. So kids, when you really use your eyes to look, you can trust that God's up to good stuff. Cause faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. Like how I'm actually Super Lawson! Go, go, Gadget, fly! You just gotta have some faith. Fly! Yeah! I'll see you guys next time. Woo! I did it! He's on! I did it! Whoa! Oh, man! Well, what a great story, right, guys? What a great reminder how God thinks that everyone is super valuable and important, right? God told Peter that he should give other people a chance, and he wanted Peter to reach out to Cornelius and his family, even though they didn't come from the same background as Peter did. And because Peter did that, Cornelius and his whole household put their faith in Jesus, you know, if you think about it, the reason that we know about Jesus today is because someone told us. You know why? Because God wants all his people to know him. He wants everybody to know that God had a plan from the very beginning to rescue us from our sins. And that plan was Jesus. And it's important for us to tell everyone about him. And it started way back at the beginning. Remember, here's our bottom line today, guys, that knowing Jesus changes the way you see others. And here's the thing. You know God wants us to love all the people that we see around us, even people that are different from us. You know, some people might talk differently than you do. They might look differently. They might do different things than you. But you know what? None of that means that you can't love them, that you can't like them, that you can't want to share Jesus with them. Because we know Jesus, it means that we should show love and respect to everyone around us, not just the people who are like us. Our faith in Jesus helps us to do what? To focus on him, but then to focus on others as well. And it helps us, and it should help us, to share God's love with everyone around us. Well, that's it for this week, guys. I'm so glad you chose to be with us and to watch. I love you guys, and I hope you have a great week. We'll see you next time.